What is going on, YouTubers? Just on the way to the office. I thought I'd uh, record a little video here for you. Hope your training is going well. You know, we are in the holiday season. Usually people are eating a lot more in November and December. Now's the time to train hard and work off that extra, <laughs> all those extra calories you're eating. Anyway, on today's uh, chat here, I wanted to talk about drilling. Now, drilling is a little bit of a, it's a word that not everybody has uh, the same understanding of what it means, and it means different things to different people. To some people, drilling means doing the same technique a hundred times, and it's something that they see as very boring, and, um, and maybe it's something that they view as unrealistic because they think it's done with no resistance. To other people, drilling could be positional, where you start in a certain position and then you just go all out. So whatever the case may be, drilling, generally speaking, is, is different than sparring in the sense that it shouldn't be 100% resistance, in my opinion. But let me back up for a second. There's all kinds of drilling that's done at Gracie Baja, where I train. But what I identified early on, well, not so early on, when I, was a, when I got my brown belt, I realized that I needed extra help with certain positions. And, you know, when you're training at an academy with a lot of people, you might not get to practice exactly that move that you need help with. So that's where drilling comes in. Uh, you know, my, my good buddy, Budo Dane, he and a couple other guys and I, we'd meet every Sunday. And for two hours, we would drill a certain position, just one position. You know, it's important when you're drilling to stay focused. And uh, we would just, uh, you know, figure out answers to things and, uh, and drill the positions that we needed help with. And that helped me a lot. And uh, I think it's something that, uh, that everybody should do. Drilling is, is huge. Because say you need help in reverse half guard. That's a position that you very well may not end up in in an hour of sparring. You know, it's a very, it requires a very specific movement on your part and on your opponent's part to get to the reverse half guard. So if you want to improve that position, how are you going to do it? It's not going to happen in sparring. That's when drilling comes in. You start in the position, you figure out what you need to do. Maybe you get an instructional or watch some YouTube videos and, and you, you learn what you need to do and then you drill them until it becomes second nature, until you have the so-called muscle memory. So not too long, last, uh, last week in a uh, sparring session, this guy kept passing my uh, reverse daily heva guard and, uh, in a way that I didn't normally have to deal with before. So, you know, on one hand, it's frustrating when someone passes or, or when you, find, when you, when you find, find a hole in your game. That can be frustrating, but it's also a wonderful learning opportunity. And that's what happened. I thought, wow, here is something I need to work on. I've worked on reverse daily heba before, but it's a particular way that this guy was getting around it. And uh, so last night, again, Buddha Dane came over the office and uh, we drilled for two hours and figured out um, ways ways to to combat that problem and I'm not gonna get too technical in this video but uh, you know sometimes you can start drilling something without knowing what the end result should be you know last night when we were drilling the reverse daily heba position I didn't know exactly what I should be doing it wasn't like I knew a technique and we were going to drill that one over and over again. It was more like, okay, here's something that's happening. And I told Dan here, try to pass this way. And then I just I would figure out more appropriate responses. You know, after you've been training for a number of years, your body knows what are safe positions, what are strong positions for you, what guards might be um, better for you to mount your offense. So, you know, I, I came, came away from that training session with some new tools. And nobody taught those to me. Those tools just manifested themselves out of spending time in that position. Again, after you've been training jiu-jitsu for a long time, 
you have all the answers inside. You know where to move your body for the most part. Sometimes you need extra outside help, sure. But you know, if you're a black belt, you, you have a good base and you know where, where your body likes to be and what positions are, are good for you and what positions are bad. So I just wanna encourage you guys that if you're not drilling in your classes, you should be drilling outside of your classes and maybe both. And, you know, the things that I want to drill might be very different than the things that you want to drill. The things that I need work on might be different than the things that you need work on. And maybe you don't even know what you need help with. You know, there's, um, somebody asked me the other day, I said, hey, I'm going to do a private lesson. Should I tell the teacher what I want to learn or should I let the teacher dictate what the lesson's about? And, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of similar to, uh, you know, what are you going to drill? Do you know what you should drill? So anyway, um, on, on that note, I think that if your teacher knows you really well, then he knows what you need work on. Or if your training partners, if you have upper belt training partners, they, they can know, like, look, I'm always passing your, uh, your half guard. You need better half guard retention skills. Um, but if this is a teacher that you don't know very well, then, um, then, Maybe you should just tell him what you need to, uh, what you what you think you need help with. And the same thing with drilling. If you're drilling with some upper belts, maybe uh, you can ask them, "Hey, look, you know, what what do you think I need help with? Let's just go over those positions." But if you're all the same level, then um, then you need to figure out what you need to drill on your own. And what should you drill? There's two ways to think about that. One is you should drill your strong points to make them stronger. And another thought is to drill your weak points. So if you're getting your guard pass in, in a sparring session, just make a note of that. Okay, hey, I just got my half guard pass with the knee cut pass. Then next time we drill, tell your partner, try to knee cut pass uh, my half guard. And, uh, and just work on that over and over again. Once they pass, restart, do it again, over and over. Is it boring? I don't think so. That's the grind. That's putting in the work. Sure, jiu-jitsu is fun if you're just flowing and, and doing whatever, but sometimes you got to put in the work, and that's what drilling is. So, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like drilling, tell me how you like to drill. Do you like to start in a certain position and figure out solutions? Do you like to work on specific techniques? Do you hate drilling? Do you only like sparring? Let me know. There's certainly different opinions, and uh, I encourage uh, disagreement <laughs> or agreement, whatever your opinion is. Don't feel like you need to agree with me all the time. Um, I'm just sharing my experiences on the path of jiu-jitsu, and, and my experiences and my thoughts may or may not be different than yours. That's totally okay. This is a martial art, and art is an expression of your own personality, and that's what I love about it. I love the fact that my jiu-jitsu can look different than yours, and, uh, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. So, guys, I'm almost to the office. So, once again, thanks for watching. I'll have, I'll be up, uh, I'll have another show up pretty soon. I'm going to start doing these more often. So, hope you enjoy them. I enjoy talking to you guys. If this is just a little bit to keep you motivated, to keep you training hard, to keep you adding uh, maybe one more day of training a week, then I'll consider that a job well done on my part. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.